Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to give you guys an update on my experience with the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. Now, I have had a sufficient amount of time to play around with this tablet, and so far I really like what I see. So I wanted to give you guys, of course, full impressions, since my initial video only told you guys really what the device felt like out of the box. So let's get down to performance of what you're getting. Again, at $500 for the 16 gig Wi-Fi model, or for the 32 gig model, it's at a $600 price point. Uh, there have been some discount sales uh, for both models respectively, but again, they are still retailing at those levels. Of course, this tablet is, you know, the thinnest and lightest 10.1 inch tablet on the market today, uh, running Honeycomb or any other operating system for that matter. And that is one of its big bragging rights, along with its great 10.1 inch PLS 1280 by 800 resolution display. But whether or not that's enough to really give you guys a full recommendation at this point uh, in the marketplace and, you know, with quad-core looming in the future and, of course, more and more flavors of honeycomb, you know, coming out every day from different manufacturers, I'll get to. But let's start with flash performance. You're looking at a 720p clip, uh, one of my reviews for the Sony HX9V, so let's go ahead and give a watch. This way you guys will get a feel for audio and video quality. 8 megabit uh, per second uh, encoding, which is the highest I've seen from a digital still camera, so that's really impressive. The stereo sound is definitely an upgrade from its predecessor, the Sony HX5V, which I've reviewed in the past. And uh, today I wanted to just dive into the features and really give you guys an in-depth look at what this camera is capable of. So I think that gives you guys a pretty good look at the flash performance. That was 720p video. Let me go ahead and back out so I can get us to another tab. Uh, but before I do that, if it permits me, impressions, I want to let let's you go ahead and close out, out YouTube. Out. You know, what I really want to stress to all of you is that this tablet is a great device and arguably the best honeycomb tablet to date. But in many ways, you know, where it shines, it's also a matter of what it gives up in the process of accomplishing what it has and by that I mean you've got this incredibly you know light 10.1 inch tablet at a pound and a quarter but it's given up all the standard features that you'll find on most of the competition which are also priced at a lower level granted this does have a superior screen and a more sleek and lightweight build but what you know it depends really on your use because you are giving up quite a bit in the fact that it does not have storage expansion capability it does not have USB functionality it does not have an HDMI out capability so you know you're really going to be depending on accessories to do just about everything but let's go ahead and browse to a website again this is the stock keyboard that comes installed go ahead over to CNN just to give you guys a look at some web browsing. I really feel that this tablet is a great piece of hardware. I think the only issue is the time to market. You know, launching this mid-June with the same hardware that's been in tablets starting with the Zoom uh, back in February of this year is just, it's too late in the game. Even though the design is great and, uh, you know, if aesthetic is at the top of your list, then clearly you're going to be drawn to this tablet because, again, lightest and thinnest, uh, you know, even besting the iPad 2, which I won't compare to this device because, you know, the iPad, while, you know, sporting an OS that is very polished and doesn't have many of the bugs that Honeycomb has to date, uh, it also has limitations that Honeycomb uh, does not. And that's part of the reason that it's polished and a little bit more finished, besides being around for a longer period of time in the marketplace. So, you know, time to market, obviously, to Apple's advantage and also the fact that they're not uh, running an OS that's as capable. I mean, Honeycomb really continues to focus on combining the best of, you know, a traditional desktop computing experience and a cloud-based mobile computing experience. And that's really what I think the Galaxy Tab 10.1 uh, embodies. However, uh, the mirror image of limitations of, you know, requiring on that 30-pin, uh, you know, connector in order to get pretty much every other functionality that, again, is standard whether it's on the Transformer, Zoom, or Acer's offering, all of those tablets also retail for less. So it is difficult, um, you know, to recommend this unless you're just completely sold on the screen and the physical build, um, which I have to say are really impressive and nothing matches it to date. But again, a very high premium 
for, you know, six month old, at least mainstream hardware, even though, of course, the Tegra 2 has been out longer than that. I just mean since it was launched in the Zoom. Uh, in that same vein, it's good to have a Tegra 2, no question, because it is the reference hardware for the Honeycomb experience. And until uh, a quad-core chip like Cal-L is introduced by NVIDIA, which is supposed to go into manufacturing somewhere between August and September, so you can figure the holiday season is probably the targeted uh, release date for some, you know, a refresh of the Honeycomb experience. I think that that's really the question. You know, are you able to wait until that refresh? If not, clearly this is one of the best tablets to date right now if you don't need those extra, uh, you know, ports for functionality that I mentioned before, like storage expansion, HDMI, and USB, because it does have everything else you expect, you know, front facing and rear. Uh, camera with flash. Uh, by the way, the cameras are not up to snuff with what you'll find on the transformer or the zoom, in my opinion. Uh, can't comment really on the Acer, but these cameras were not uh, the best in the business to say the least. They're functional, uh, definitely better than what's found on the iPad too. Again, don't like to draw that comparison, but the hardware does look really similar and uh, I can't tell you guys how many times people uh, think that this is an iPad too. After all, Samsung is responsible for manufacturing uh, you know, I think somewhere around 80 plus percent of what goes into the iPad 2 and the original iPad. Of course, that will change uh, with time and the current relations that we're seeing between uh, Apple and Samsung. But again, back to this tab, I think it is one of the best pieces uh, of hardware out there right now. The question really is, is it worth uh, the premium over the competition, especially in light of the fact that this will most likely be on sale in the next, I would say, anywhere from two to three months since I've already seen it dip as low as 450 in its first week launched. So really nice piece of hardware. I do uh, endorse picking this up, but of course with reservations that I've noted. Again, that all relates to what you plan on doing with this tablet. Uh, if you're going to be trying to replace a netbook, then this probably isn't the best choice because of the uh, you know 30 pin proprietary connector that will basically require you to pick up accessories in the same way an iPad 2 would. Um, something, again, you won't uh, you know, see with the competition. Not trying to beat a dead horse, but I think everyone really needs to understand that. So clearly this is a case of form over function, at least in the honeycomb uh, sector of tablets right now. But again, it does deliver one of the best experiences. Things I want to point out, I really like the haptic feedback. Definitely nice to have. Again, the screen is fantastic, pinch to zoom, flawless. Overall performance is great. Uh, not very excited about the TouchWiz uh, update that is supposed to eminently drop, but I'm not going to write Samsung off. They do have an opportunity to provide, uh, you know, a little bit more flair and customization to Honeycomb through TouchWiz uh, since it is a tablet-specific version, unlike um, the version that we saw on the Galaxy Tab 7, which was optimized but not... Uh, as rebuilt as this version. So we'll see how that ends up working out for the Galaxy Tab 10.1. Of course, that's not something you'll face with the Zoom or really even the Transformer, even though the Transformer, you're going to be relying on updates uh, from the manufacturer. It's still, you know, a little bit more stock clearly than going down a TouchWiz road, which you can see we do not have uh, yet on this tablet. But again, if you're able to wait, I would sit it out right now if you absolutely have to have the thinnest, lightest, you know, most attractive, at least by some standards, honeycomb tablet to date uh, that also, without question, has the best screen, then there's no question you will be satisfied with the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. Again, if you're looking to replace a netbook, I would explore some other options. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And actually, before I close, I almost forgot to mention battery life. Pretty important. Uh, battery life on this model has been pretty much the same in line with what you'll see from the Zoom. Uh, the bragging rights of being around 10 hours weren't completely accurate in my use. Um, but more importantly, the charging time. Again, you're going to be charging through that 30-pin connector. Um, you know, even going to a wall, it's just really slow. I think it's somewhere around you know, four hours to get this baby charged. So compared to the competition, at least the Zoom and the Transformer, that's a really poor recharge time. But that's really the only complaint I can give you guys outside of, you know, as I mentioned, my hammering home of the missing features and requirement to buy ancillary uh, accessories to get things that are built in on pretty much all the competition's offerings. Anyway, any questions or comments? Again, guys, please feel free to post them. 
And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.